So now let's talk about Ezra Pound's The Encounter. There's a little story here. I mean, in a way, it's possible to say that one could have written a short story about this scene. Let's say it's a, a scene in an urban bohemian place, you know, in the 19 teens. And there's a story about a man and a woman, seemingly a man and a woman, uh, at least there's one woman in the poem. They meet of an evening. So can someone tell the story? Molly, go ahead. Once upon a time. There was some sort of salon, some sort of fancy intellectual political discussion. Could be any of those or all of those. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and I was in a room, Ezra was in a room. The speaker. The speaker was in a room. Uh, and noticed a woman staring him up and down, exploring him with her eyes. Mm -hmm. And when he rose to leave, her fingers touched him, and they felt like... Tell the story even more elaborately. When he rose to go, you can make it up. <laughs> she reached out to stop me and touched my Don't hand. Don't go. Right? Maybe we can leave together. Yeah. Or maybe you can stay a while. Oh, yeah. And her fingers were crisp and papery. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Max, how does the story end? Um, Don't look at the poem. You have to make this up now. Going off of what Molly said? No. Well, how does the story end? A man, a man, presumably a man, a speaker, speaker created by Pound. Let's just assume a man is at a party, meets a woman. She's obviously looking at him. And they leave together or... They don't leave together or... I think they don't leave together. Because? Because he, he rises to go. They don't exchange any words and she, she stops She's him. And they, they, they have a fingers. moment and then that's... And, Is he turned off by her, by her weird paper handshake? Was it a handshake? Let's do it. It's, it's got to be a little <laughs> more... It's not like it's, a hey, man. It's sort, it's of, a, uh, it's sort of like that. <laughs> <laughs> Why, why are you laughing? Why are you laughing? <laughs> Molly, try it. Is it that? Yes, it's that right there. Like that. Max, how come you don't know how to do that? I, I don't have Molly's I think Max did a really good impression of it. <laughs> okay, so um, what does this have to do with anything? What does this have to do with imagism? He's telling a story which is not what imagism does. And by this point, I mean, let's face it, Ezra Pound is very important. Most, many of these movements, he was probably an imagist for about three weeks or six months or something. And he's very, he, you know, he would move on to something else. So we can't really pin that, we can't make this an imagist poem, but insofar as, as, as knowing about imagism helps us understand it, Kristen, what is its relevance at all, if any? Well, I think that the title leads us a little bit because he's talking about the encounter, this one moment that, or this is a couple of moments, obviously, because he rises to go and she stops him and you hear the background noise too, of the, the people talking, the new morality. But um, by talking about this encounter, the way he is, he's objectifying it and kind of turning the her of the poem into an object for him to study. Okay. And that has to do with imagism because. Well, it's does. the image, yeah. It renders dynamism, intersubjectivity, a relationship, an encounter. It renders it as a th as a thing. Mm -hmm. because it, it makes it static in a way. It makes it static. I think he's okay. making a feeling into a thing. He's making a whole emotion concrete, which is lust into well, the, the napkin. I, I think you're right, except that when Max and Molly narrated the story, there didn't seem to be a whole lot of emotion. There might have been uh, one coming on to the other in a kind of possibly sexual way, probably sexual way, and then the other either responding or not. So it's not clear how much real emotion was involved. But let's talk about the first line. Who's they? All the while they were talking the new morality. Amaris, who's they? Um, I mean, we don't know, but... Well, he's probably just referencing society in general and um, the customs of interactions between men and women and how this particular woman is defying those. But it's not people in general. There's a scene here. So the other people at the dinner or on the table? Yeah, they're, they're at a party or a salon, I think is the right word. One imagines this in a a sort of a hip, artsy space. There's some evidence for that in the last line. 
not only is her, are her fingers likened to a Japanese paper napkin, but at this time, partly, um, well, there's a lot of influences on it, but partly because the, the, all the esthetes, the painters and poets were really into things Japanese and, and things Korean and things Chinese. Um, partly because of the cross influence of haiku and other forms that that encouraged people like Pound to speak of the importance of radical condensation, which was a tradition in the Far East already. And there was also a craze in bohemian circles for decorating in this kind of way. So, so we have this kind of bohemian scene, as Molly sort of suggested, but they, the other people, were talking the numerality. They weren't talking about the numerality. What's the difference between Emily talking, idiomatically speaking, talking the numerality as opposed to talking about the numerality? Well, one is um, disparaging in a sense. It suggests that people are just tossing these words around in an ostentatious way. Um, talking the numerality. Talking the numerality as opposed to walking the walk of the numerality. They're just talking the numerality. They're doing the vocabulary of it. And by the way, what would the numerality be? at this time. It's, it's loosening of morals, sexual gratification, immediate gratification. Right, so sexual, aesthetic, political freedom and radicalism. So what's, how does Pound stand in relation or how does Pound's speaker stand in relation to the new morality? Anna, take a guess. Um, well, it seems like he's not really focusing on the new morality so much as he's focusing on the woman who's... Yeah, so what him. does he have to say about the new morality, Anna? You're or those, those, who, those, who, those who talk about it? He doesn't really, I mean, he only gives them one line. He doesn't seem to be super engaged with While it. While they talk the new morality, he's focusing she's on. exploring me. She's doing the new morality. They may... They've, they're talking it, but she seems to be looking me up and down. She seems to be ready to do the new morality. But he's more interested in it. That's a Poundian moment. I mean, isn't that a Poundian <laughs> moment? They can do the rhetoric of the new morality, but I'm all about the, the action here. Uh, and so she explores me. Now notice she is the subject and he's the object for one moment. That doesn't happen very, for very long. And then he acts to go. And then what happens? To her subjectivity. He rejects it. We don't know that, but well, what does I, the poem do? Well, the poem turns answer. her into, or turns her hand at least, or her fingers into an object. So we have a poem that's, uh, that's a bit narrative, that, ha that experiences a moment of distinction from uh, social rhetoric that allows the speaker allows himself to be an object of another subject, and the encounter could be subject to subject, which would be ideal in terms of equality of the two people. Um, but then, once it's time for him to act, he does, then he reverts to imagism, you might say. He does the imagistic thing of rendering her into an image. Any comments on that? Am I wrong? Um, and if I'm right, what do you think? Amaris, happy with this? Um, I mean... Am I being too hard on it? Perhaps. I think he's, the metaphor is referring to that sensation, that encounter, um, that brief moment of human contact. I don't really see him so much converting her into what would someone who? What would someone who advocates for a person, let's say a woman, being seen as a subject or a whole person as opposed to just her hand. What would that person, maybe let's say a feminist, say to, or, you know, there, there's the you know, very important uh, point in la latter day <coughs> feminism was that the things like advertisements that would feature women's hands or women's torsos without the head in, in style or fashion. Um, she would, I mean, probably object to being reduced to a Japanese paper napkin. We don't know that she would, but we well, could. Well, a feminist, I mean. Right, right. We'd probably object right. to this woman being reduced. Is there a danger here, anyone? And I'll, I'll allow Amaris to finish because I cut her off. Um, is there a danger here of finding in imagism or in this impulse to create an image, is there a danger of objectification? 
And uh, is the, or is there a particular incapacity of this new writing to deal well with people as subjects? Kind of a leading question, but I'm curious. I don't think it's actually a dismemberment that's occurring here. She's, he's not reducing the importance or value of this woman to the sensation of her likening her to a Japanese paper napkin. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't have the same feminist objection to it as I would to media portrayals of women as you, uh, that you were referencing. And perhaps imagism has more of that focus on just that um, the Japanese aesthetic we were discussing before of this minimalism and concision and exactitude that isn't supposed to be limiting. It's just supposed to be refined and condensed. Before we, yes, please. Yeah. Um, I just think that the fact that initially in the poem she is acting, her eyes are exploring him, um, makes it very clear that he is aware while he's not necessarily taking part in the talking of the new immorality. It seems like the thing he's focused on is being aware of her interiority. And so when he goes, and I also agree with you guys in that I feel like nothing actually ends up happening. I think he does leave. It he goes home seems, to write the poem. Why does he need to right. have a relationship? He's it, got his poem. It seems as though his kind of that decision um, is based on, is, is grounded almost in a kind of rejecting that interiority, which is what the kind of rejection that I was talking about a couple minutes ago. Um, and that, I think, that like, very much bothers me. Oh, I'm all excited <laughs> to have a final word. I, I apologize. Oh, maybe Emily has something to say, but let me just throw mine out and you'll get the final word. Because you're so good at that. Oh my God. <laughs> I think interior, interiority is the thing that's at issue here. I believe he orientalizes her. And he makes her part of the decor, the fashionable decor. So this poem begins with a distinction from and a criticism of those who just talk the new morality. But in the end, it just talks the new morality because it takes a woman that he could encounter, a real person that he could encounter, who has rendered him briefly into an object. He doesn't like that too much, maybe. And he's turned her into part of the interior decorating. And, there, and I don't blame her for not wanting to go with him, but he then runs home. I'm sorry, I'm adding that to the story once upon a time. And he's got his poem in which this person got rendered aesthetically the way he wanted to. He's, he's part of the fashion. Oh, I'm sorry. Emily, here's your final word. Nope, I like your reading better. <laughs> but give us what you were thinking. Um, I read this poem and the first thing I thought was it's not, yeah, it's not completely imagistic. It does different things. But something, something that's kind of lovely about it is, is it shows how images, even if they can't communicate the truth or the objectness of a given object, they can contain a narrative. And um, just the sort of evocativeness of her fingers being like a paper napkin, watching you guys act that out was sort of wonderful. And I read a lot of short fiction, and sort of the more minimal short fiction gets, it begins to mine the narrative properties of an image. I love it. You've, in a <laughs> sense, shown us that imagism can include narrative. Yeah. And, and, and that Pound is very talented at creating a story and rendering it in a very specific way. So nice, once again, nice final work.